नमस्कार आई एम डॉक्टर सुप्रिया शाह सितार प्लेयर ऑफ मेहर घराना असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंस्ट्रूमेंटल म्यूजिक फैकल्टी ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट अ लेक्चर डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन ऑन सितार व्हिच इज आर्ग्युबली द मोस्ट पॉपुलर इंडियन क्लासिकल म्यूजिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट वर्ल्ड वाइड आई शुड फर्स्ट टेल यू ब्रीफली about the evolution of the sitar from ancient times to its present form there are three hypotheses regarding the origin of the sitar the first hypothesis which was proposed by karam imam and captain willard the invention of the sitar has been credited to amir khusro who was a poet in the court of alauddin khilji this is however disputed because amir khusro himself never mentioned this instrument in any of his works according to a text madan ul mausiki written by mohammad karam imam in 1854 niamat khan sada rang had a younger brother who was very skilled in the art of sitar playing his nephew firoz khan ada rang was also a skilled instrument player and was a big name in the field of music he was also believed to have played several compositions dexterously on the sitar although the name of the younger brother of niamat khan is not mentioned in the text some scholars believe that his name was khusro khan and he in fact was the inventor of sitar and not amir khusro This hypothesis is also not credible because nowhere in the text is it mentioned that Khusro Khan was the inventor of the sitar. The most credible hypothesis regarding the origin of the sitar is the one that regards the Tritantri Veena mentioned in Bharat's Natya Shastra as the precursor to modern day sitar. When the Muslims came to India they began to call the three tantri veena by the persian name seh tar seh meaning three in persian and tar meaning string this seh tar over a period of time became sitar the three tantri veena was also known as the jantra in common parlance the aine akbari describes the jantra as a stringed instrument with a gourd resonator and movable frets much like the present day sitar the jantra was also used as a synonym for sitar for a long time around the 14th and the 15th centuries the jantra was used by the krishna bhakt poets as an accompanying instrument to vocal music by the 18th century the senya gharana ustads who were descendants of the of tansen adopted this instrument the den sitar to teach the intricacies of the bean or the rudra veena on the students who were outside the circle of kinship this led to further improvements and modifications in the sitar which became more or less standardized by the 1940s and 50s i shall now tell you a little about the construction of the sitar The sitar as you can see has two main parts the fingerboard or the dand and the resonator or the tumba The tumba is carved out of a hollow gourd It is covered by a wooden plate which is known as the tabli the fingerboard or the dand is carved out of hollow tun wood and sometimes hollow teak wood the frets as you can see are tied to the fingerboard with the help of a nylon thread you can see two bridges here a big a bigger one on which the main strings of the sitar rest and a smaller one just ahead of the main bridge which is also called the ghurach 
This one, the smaller one, is for the sympathetic strings or the tarab strings, which provide resonance to the instrument. And they are tuned to the respective notes of a particular raga. A sitar has, usually has 6 to 7 main strings and 11 to 13 sympathetic strings. The main strings, as you can see, are tied on one end to a metallic piece called langot at the base of the tumba. This metallic piece here. And they move over the gurach. And on the other hand, on the other end, they are wound around the wooden pegs in the peg box, which is at the top of the sitar on the other end of the fingerboard. These wooden pegs can be turned to tune the strings. Some of the main strings also have <clears throat> some beads or mankas. They could be round or oval in shape or even in the shape, beautifully carved in the shape of a duck or a bird. These are provided for fine tuning of the strings. The sympathetic strings are also similarly tied to a hook on the langot on one end and they pass through holes drilled in the fingerboard to be wound around the smaller pegs on the side of the fingerboard. The part where the fingerboard and the resonator or the tumba are joined is called the gulu. The gulu, the tabli and the hollowed out board or tumba are the most important parts of the sitar as they are the resonating, they make the resonating chamber of the sitar. Coming back to the ghorach, the surface of the ghorach is very important and it is filed from time to time in order to keep it smooth because the tonality and the timber of the sitar are also determined by the smoothness of the gurach. This work is known as javari and it requires a very skilled technician. As regards the structure of the sitar, we find that two models are in vogue these days. One is the Pandit Ravi Shankar model and the other is the Ustad Vilayat Khan model. These two models of sitar differ from each other in certain aspects. I'll talk about the Ravi Shankar model first because that is the sitar I also play. In this model, there are seven main strings out of which two are chikari strings. The other five uh, main strings have two thick strings which are known as the Laraj and the Kharaj strings. The Laraj and the Kharaj strings have been added in this model in order to execute the alapchari of the dhrupadang which is a specialty of the mehar gharana the laraj string is tuned to ati mandra pa or pancham and the kharaj is tuned to ati ati mandra sharaj the second string is tuned to mandra sa and the main string or the baj katar is tuned to mandra madhyam One of the chikaris, the smaller chikari, is tuned to tarsa, the longer chikari to madhyasa, and there is a steel string which is tuned to either mandrapa or mandra madhyam, depending on which note is more prominent in which rag. Other than this, the Ravi Shankar style of the sitar is slightly wider, bigger and heavier in size compared to the Ustad Vilayat Khan uh, style of the sitar. And that is because it accommodates the Laraj and Kharaj strings also. As you can see, there is a lot of ornamentation also done on the tabli and uh, very intricate inlay work. And all these factors contribute to the tonality of this instrument. 
The Vilayat Khani uh, sitar is uh, smaller in size because it has six main strings and 11 uh, sympathetic strings as against the 13 uh, strings uh, in the Ravi Shankar uh, sitar. The tabli in the Vilayat Khani sitar is slightly thicker uh, compared to the Ravi Shankar style of sitar. The curvature of the frets, the thickness of the tabli, the strings and also the bridge and how the javari is done on the bridge, all these factors provide a unique uh, quality to the tone and the timbre of each type of sitar and they have been made specially to execute the special style of playing, uh, whether it's uh, the Ravi Shankar style of playing or Ustad Vilayat Khan's uh, style of playing. The sitar is uh, played sitting in the Ardh Gomuk Asan and it is played with the help of a metallic plectrum or the mizrab which is worn on the right index finger. I'm wearing it here as you can see. The individual notes in a sitar are produced by pressing the string on the fret, on the requisite fret and striking the string with the mizrab like this. Another thing that I would like to tell you about the frets of the sitar is that there are about 19 to 21 frets in a sitar. These frets are movable. So if there is a rag which uses the komal swaras, re, g, dh or ni, the frets of those notes can be moved and adjusted in order to produce the komal swaras. I will show you how. I will move the fret of the rishab upwards in order to make it komal rishab. And similarly, the fret of dhevat can be moved upwards closer to the fret of pancham so that komal dhevat can be played on it. Similarly, the tar saptak rishab fret can be moved upwards to play the Tar Saptak Komal Rishab, the Gandhar Shuddh Gandhar fret in the Tar Saptak can also be moved upwards to play Komal Gandhar in the Tar Saptak and the Madhyam, the Shuddh Madhyam fret can be moved downwards in order to play the Tivra Madhyam. The Sound can be produced on the sitar with inwards and outwards movements of the mizrab. The inward movement is called da and the outward movement is called ra. So these are the two main strokes or the bowls of sitar and various combinations and tempos of these two main bowls produce different kinds of bowl patterns which are used in sitar playing. So this way I have played Komal Rishab. When I move the fret back to its original position, I get Shudre. If I want to play the scale of uh, Kalyan, I have a fret for Tivra Madhyam as well as Shuddha Madhyam here. So I do not need to move the frets in the Madhya Saptak. However, in the Tar Saptak, I can move the fret downwards and play Tivra Madhyam. I'll now talk about, uh, talk a little about the ornamentations, the techniques which are used uh, in sitar playing, we have a variety of techniques uh, which provide, uh, which beautify uh, the, uh, the sitar playing and uh, which help us to execute the various nuances of a rag. So, uh, 
uh, I'll tell you a little about the techniques. We have the Krintan, we have the Zamzama, uh, Khatka, Murki, Need, Gamak and so on. These are the various uh, ornamental uh, techniques which we use in the course of playing. So I'll tell you one by one every technique. This is the Krintan. So a Krintan is of uh, different kinds. Swars, three swars, four swars. Very similar to this, but still different, is the zamzama technique. important techniques because it helps us get closer to Gaiki to execute elements of Gaiki on sitar because it helps us to move away from staccato notes and play continuous flowing notes. So here we can pull different notes from one fret by pulling the string. of singing or when, when there is a vocal rendition, uh, the continuity of the swaras can be achieved on the sitar with the help of the mead. Apart from this, there is another technique uh, which is called the gamak, which is an oscillation of the notes by pulling the string, shaking the note making round movements with the nose. This is the gamak. So a combination of all of these techniques is uh, applied uh, when a rag is played. I shall now demonstrate a few exercises which can be played uh, during riyas and they can help improve the clarity of the stroke and also enhance the speed. So uh, the first exercise is to do the Muchna Alankar. Uh, it can first be played on the main string or the Bajkata starting from Pa in the Mandra Saptak. it can be started from the Jodi uh, which is the Mandrasa. So one has to be careful that the Da and the Ra have equal emphasis and uh, one can even practice these exercises only with Da to start with and only with Ra. Uh, so that the volume of both the da and the ra strokes becomes equal and uniform. So here I played it with da first and then only with ra. And then I can continue with da and ra, the alternate strokes. Then, uh, like I said, uh, these two main bowls can be used in different uh, permutations and combinations and different tempos to make different bowl patterns uh, of the right hand. And for this also, there are specific ex exercises. Uh, 
supposed to be done i shall now uh, talk a little about the format in which a sitar recital usually takes place uh, the sequence followed is uh, the alap which is a slow elaboration of the rag it is uh, not accompanied by any percussion instrument and it is non rhythmic and the alap is then followed by a jor and a jhala which have uh, a rhythm but again there is no percussion uh, accompaniment there Uh, thereafter uh, vilambit gat uh, or a masid khani gat uh, which is a slow tempo composition is played usually set to teen tal and uh, then a fast composition is played uh, which is called a drud gat or the raza khani gat and finally it is concluded with the jhala which is the last portion of a performance and uh, it employs uh, different combinations different attractive combinations of the chikari string I'll just demonstrate this for you here. combinations of the chikari here and uh, the performance usually ends uh, with this uh, sometimes the thumri yang uh, compositions are also played or a dhun is usually played a semi classical dhun is uh, also played uh, as a second and the concluding part of a sitar recital uh, as regards the compositions uh, i told you about the masid khani and the raza khani gats but sometimes the khyal ang uh, compositions especially in madhya or drutle may also be played uh, and uh, then uh, there are also gatkari uh, compositions like the masid khani and raza khani which uh, predominantly use the mizrab bowls uh, and the arrangement of the bowls is such that the uh, the bowl patterns are in keeping with the divisions of the tal uh, 
so this is how the instrumental uh, compositions or the gat kari ang uh, is played on sitar that's that is how it is executed uh, i will uh, play a small piece in rag hansadhvani where i will play a very short alap and jod uh, just to give you an idea and i will also play a chhota khyal uh, bandish uh, very famous bandish in rag hansadhvani lagi lagan pati sakhi sang thereafter i shall play Uh, an instrumental composition which was composed by my guruji late uh, pandit uma shankar mishra ji so uh, rag hans dhwani
your knowledge and understanding of the sitar. Thank you. Namaskar.